Whenever you get a word problem, the first thing you do is read the word problem and mark what you know. A painter rented a wallpaper steamer at 9 a.m. and returned it at 4 p.m. He paid a total of $28.84. What was the rental cost per hour? Now the first thing we want to do is say, what is it we're looking for? What is it that we don't know? So we're going to let our pawn equal the rental cost per hour, because that's what we don't know. So we start by saying the pawn is going to equal the rental cost per hour. Alright, so what do we know in this problem? Well, looking back, we have a word here that gives us something really important, our total. So let's take a look at our balance and how things are going to balance out. Well, we know we got the 2884 over here. That's the total. It's all by itself. On the other side, what do we need to know? Well, we need to know the rental cost per hour. That's our pawn because we don't know what the cost is, but we do know how many hours that he spent doing it. And what was that? That was between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. So we're looking at about seven hours, right? So in this case, it's not like the ones we did on the balance beam with the adding. We're multiplying. So seven hours times some cost is equal to 2884. So this time, it's not an adding or subtracting. It's a dividing because it's seven times whatever the rental cost is is equal to 2884. The opposite of times, of course, is dividing. So we're saying, how many times does our 7 go into 2884? Now, with this kind of a standardized test, do we need to do it down to the penny? Maybe not when we look at our choices. And in this case, our choices are A, $2.43, B, $3.61, C, $4.12, and D, $5.77. Okay? So what we're going to say is 7 goes into 2884 roughly how many times? So if you want to start by saying 7 goes into 28 four times, here's an answer with a 4 in it. You can make a pretty good bet that it's probably going to be $4.12. Okay, so let's look at the process again. We read the problem. Number one, read the problem. As you're reading the problem, highlight the important information. Take a look, key in on your important information, okay? Important words. So you read the problem, you try not to panic, you look at your important words, and then you look at what your question is. What is it that you're looking for? Okay, so that's step one. You're reading it. You're looking for the important information. Step two, you decide what is your pawn? What is it that you don't know? And usually that question comes at the end. So your pawn, in this case again, is your rental cost per hour. Once you know that, then take a look. Have they given you your total, or are you looking for your total? Once again, with your equation, it has to be balanced. So your total is going to be on one side, and everything else is on the other side. So in this case, they've given us our total, so we're putting it here. We know that that's what it needs to total. And on the other side are the parts that will come to the total. So your pawn, in this case, is how many hours? I mean, um, the rental cost per hour, excuse me, and times how many hours, all right? So if we know it's seven hours, which we figured out by saying the difference between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m., then we're saying seven times the cost per hour gives us our total. We're dividing seven into the 28. We say it's roughly four. We look down at our choices. Is there one with a four? Yes, there is. We're going with it. And it's logical because we know seven into 84 will be some amount of change, and there's only one answer that has a 4 and some amount of change, so we know that's it. So that's that type of problem. Okay, let's take a look at this. Step 1, read the problem. And highlight anything in the problem, oops, <laughs> highlight anything in the problem that you think 
is important information. Okay, Dominic earns $285 per week plus an 8% commission rate on all his sales. So that's all his sales. If he sells $4,213 $4, worth on merchandise in one week, how much will his total earnings for the week be? All right, well, let's take a look. What is it we are looking for? What are we going to let our pawn represent? Okay, so let our pawn be, what is it that we're trying to find? What is our x? What is our variable? Let our pawn be the total earnings for the week. Okay, we're looking for the total earnings. So that means everything else has to add up to what we're looking for. So let's take a look right here at our balance beam. So we got to have the total by itself on one side because everything else is going to be balancing to that side. So we got the total earnings over here. This is what we don't know. This is what we're trying to find. And on the other side, let's take a look what we have. We know we have $285 on this side because that's one part of it, but there's something else that's going to have to be over there, and that is 8% commission. Well, we know how much he sold because we had 8% commission on what? On our 4213 So we're going to have our 285 plus our 8%, which is 0 0.08, times, which we'll put in parentheses, 4, 2, 1, 3. All of that is going to equal to our answer. Once we do all our calculations, we have things balanced. Well, how do we do 8% of 4213? You actually came up with an excellent method. 8% of 1,000 is $80, so we got $80 on, on um, 1,000, so $80, $80, $80, $80, or 4 times $80, you got about $320 right there, and you're adding it to your 285, so you know that you got roughly somewhere in the neighborhood of 600 when you're adding that and that will be your final answer because you just have one pawn on the other side. So again you look at your answers 337 and 4 cents. Well we know it can't be that. That is way too low for 285 plus 320 way too low. 359 and some odd change way too low. So we know that it's either going to be this $513 or it's going to be this 622.04. And if you take a look, we know that 285 plus 320 is more towards your 622 mark. So that's your answer. So to look at this again, 285 per week plus 8% commission rate on all the sales. If he sells 4213 worth on merchandise in one week, how much will his total earnings for the week be? So we're letting our pawn be the total earnings. So the total is on one side over here because remember, everything else totals to it. So, so it's got to balance. So you have your 285 plus, means to add, 8%, 0.08, times 4213. And you go through your math and you should have it. Now let's do a little review on percent. Okay, let's take a look at percentage. Um, I apologize this drawing because all the pieces should be the same size, but anyway. Percentage means per hundred. So you look at per cent. That's the same thing as saying per hundred. Per means for every. So for every hundred pieces, this is how many you get. So if you have five percent, you're going to get one, two, three, four, five. So five percent is not a whole lot. Five percent. We cut it up into a hundred pieces. So per every hundred, we get five. So again, one, two, three, four, five. There's my five percent. Well, if I get ten percent, then six, seven, 8, 9, 10. If I get 50%, then I'm going to have to color in all of these. There's 10, 20%, 30%, 40%, 
50%. So you can see that 50% is the same thing as half. So you can look at 50%. You can look at 0.5. You can look at 0.50. You can look at 50 over 100. You can look at 1 half. And it's actually all the same thing. Makes sense? Because 50 over 100, we have 100 pieces, and we get 50 of them. Okay? One half, you can easily see that 50 of them is half of this whole thing. 50% how per cent is per 100. So we had 100 of them, we get 50 of them. 0.50, we get 50 of them. Okay, so it's all talking about the same thing. So if I ask for 8%, what's another way of saying that? 0 0.08, because out of those 100 pieces, I get 8 of them. 12%, another way of saying it could be 0 0.12. 100%, 1.00 because if I get a hundred of those pieces I get the whole thing I get one whole entire thing if I have a hundred and fifty percent I get 1.5 or 1.50 same difference in other words I would get all of those hundred pieces in one of the things plus I would get about half of the next one so that's why I have 1.5 or 1 and a half because I have one whole one here and part of the next one. Whereas in this case, out of all those little pieces, all I'm getting is eight of them up here. Okay, so if you can visualize that, it should make sense in terms of percent. Okay, so for this week, I want you to practice your times tables. You got to get those things down so that, you know, every day you're just working on those. Find the method that works best for you. Um, I want you to go over last week's video to make sure you're clear on how to do that type of a problem. Go over this week's video to make sure that you see how to do this type of problem. And then on the next page, I have some problems for you. And I'll see you next Tuesday. Okay, here are three problems to work on. I tried to switch things up for you, so be careful. It's not going to be exactly like the pattern of the other ones. So remember, step one, read the problem. Step two, highlight the information you have. Step three, figure out what it is that you're looking for, and is it a part or is it a total? So where does it go on your balance beam? And then see if you can, can work these through. All right, good luck.